Coming up, sleep deprived? Is it possible to catch up on those extra Z's you lost? Around the globe this week, we're introducing you to the happiest country in the world. Any guesses? We'll go behind the scenes with the Boston Celtics. I read that you have a prayer board with hopes and dreams. Now that you're an NBA head coach, what's your next dream? Um, it's a good question. Plus, pop quiz. Will you know the answer? And in our latest Inspiring Kids series, we meet a young man making a difference in his community by whipping up some sweet treats. I feel like it's really simple. I just like cooking. I like baking um, and like feeding people, even if they can't afford it. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It is great to be here. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season with your family and friends. I'm back in our studios in New York City. We've got a really cool lineup to kick off the year. Our pal Dr. John Torres is here to dispel some myths about sleep. We're kicking off our Around the Globe series with a trip to Finland, and we'll put your knowledge to the test with our pop quiz. But first, our friend Dylan Dreyer is here to explain the natural phenomenon known as the Northern Lights. From the great migration of wildebeest on the plains of the Serengeti, to the glow in the dark plankton on the shores of the Indian Ocean, nature sure knows how to put on a show. But did you know that one of the most spectacular shows on Earth takes place in the sky? In the Northern Hemisphere, glowing lights known as the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights, dance in the night sky. So what exactly are the Northern Lights? To find out, we asked Professor Don Hampton. He studies the Northern Lights at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. The Northern Lights are the lights that uh, occur when particles from the sun enter our upper atmosphere and they act uh, just like a neon sign. The electrons that come from the sun bump into our upper atmosphere particles, uh, atoms and molecules. And when they do that, they leave a little bit of energy behind and that energy comes out and a little bit of a light from those uh, atoms and molecules. That light is called an aurora and the gases in our atmosphere determine their color. The brightest one is sort of that green color. And so most of the pictures you see and when you're watching the aurora, that's the first thing you'll see. Uh, but uh, very often there's a very, very deep red that you see sometimes. Uh, and the, the most exciting aurora, the very active aurora, you often see sort of that pink lower border you can sort of see in the picture behind me. Um, so the, the, the green is oxygen and the, the pink is actually nitrogen. If you want to see the northern lights, where should you go? The best place you, to see the northern lights is uh, far in the north. Uh, they tend to be in an oval around the North Pole. And, and it, so places like Alaska and then across sort of central and northern Canada is the best place to watch them in, in the Americas. Uh, but if you're in Europe, you can watch them in, in Scandinavia, up in Norway and Sweden. And they're not as elusive as you might think. What you need is a nice clear sky, you need a nice dark sky, so it's better to be out of town. But uh, once you get out of town, like here in Fairbanks, if you just have a nice open place and the, the uh, solar wind conditions are correct, uh, then you can, you can definitely see the aurora almost any night. Even though he's been studying them for years, Professor Hampton still gets wowed each time he watches the northern lights. I think it's just uh, the, the vivid colors and just uh, how big they are. When you, when you go out and watch them, I love going out and watching them. Uh, it's just so big and, and so sort of mysterious. I think different people have different reasons for thinking they're magical, but I still enjoy going out and watching them even to this day. All right, thanks, Dylan. Let's turn to our medical myth series now. Between school and extracurricular activities, chances are you don't always get the sleep you need, which got us thinking, when the weekend rolls around, can you actually catch up on sleep that you may have lost? Our friend Dr. John is here with the answer. When you get busy with school, activities, and sleepovers on the weekend, you might not always get a full night's sleep. Well, this can lead to something called a sleep debt. In other words, it's how much sleep you owe your body and your mind. So the question is, can you catch up on that missed sleep? Well, the answer is yes, sort of. Many of us try to sleep longer on the weekends and wake up later to try and catch up in all the sleep that we might have missed out on during the week. But that doesn't work as well as we'd like. 
Scientists have actually studied this and they found out that when you lose just one hour of sleep, it takes around four days of normal sleep to try and catch up. So sleeping in on the weekend alone won't do it. It's gonna take getting normal amounts of sleep, that's nine to 11 hours a night for most of you, on a regular basis to not nod off during your classes. All right, thanks, Dr. John. Now for our Around the Globe series. Today, we are heading to Finland. Did you know it's been called the happiest country in the world? Maybe it's because kids there get two birthday parties, one with friends and one with families. Here to tell us all about Finland is our friend Kristen Dahlgren. Where can you sleep under the northern lights, feed a reindeer, and breathe some of the world's cleanest air? If you guess the country of Finland, you'd be correct. Nestled in northern Europe, Finland is a peninsula that borders Sweden, Norway, and Russia. It's known as the happiest country in the world. I think happiness is something that means different things to everybody. I think one of the things that we Finns really love about our country is that we have a lot of nature, we have a lot of forests, clean waters to swim in. So we do really enjoy it spending a lot of time outdoors in the nature, and that makes us all happy. Its capital, Helsinki, is home to numerous museums and restaurants. You can also visit Suomenlinna, an 18th century sea fortress. In 1991, the fortress was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List as a unique monument of military architecture. After all that exploring, you may be hungry. So what food should you try while visiting? For kids, I would say the most popular food would be mashed potatoes and fittest meatballs for sure. But we also eat a lot of fish and I would think that the salmon soup is probably the most popular dish in Finland. We also eat a lot of rye bread and cinnamon buns are very popular desserts. And believe it or not, many people in Finland love salty licorice candies as well. If you happen to be celebrating your birthday in Finland, you may want to adopt this tradition. A lot of families actually organize two different parties, one for the friends and one, then one for the family and the relatives. This is just to make sure that everybody has fun. I think the kids love to have two birthday parties because there is always a possibility to have more presents when you have two parties. Do you love summer? Then Finland is the country for you. During the peak summer months, it doesn't get dark at all. And if you want to cool off, there are plenty of places where you can swim. Finland is often called the land of thousand lakes, but actually there are 188,000 lakes in Finland. So most of the southern part of Finland is actually covered by water and lakes. And in the summertime, it's very popular to go swimming in those lakes. And in the wintertime, they are all frozen, so you can even go skating. Skating isn't the only winter activity the country has to offer. Head north to visit the big man himself. We have the Santa Claus Village, which is located right by the Arctic Circle. That is a very popular place to visit. And in Santa Claus Village, you can actually meet the Santa Claus every day of the year because it's open all year round. Spring, summer, fall or winter, there's always something exciting to do in Finland. Kiitos, Kristen. That's thank you in Finnish. Time now for our pop quiz. Here are our nightly kids correspondents, Ilya and Ariana Simmons, with this week's question. True or false? Identical twins have the same fingerprints. The answer coming up a little later on. Coming up, would you like to feed a giraffe? We'll tell you where you can do just that. And we'll take the court with the Boston Celtics. I'm in the locker room right now. Everyone's really just getting in the zone to play the Orlando Magic. Yeah. I know you're known for jumping with your hands up to contest opponent's shot from far away. Yeah. Uh, what was the idea behind this? Yeah, so the idea behind it, um, I mean, I started doing it maybe like a year or two ago. A lot of times I'm by the rim and helping, uh, trying to cover up and like prevent layups and stuff. And then it gets kicked out to your guy, and you're like, not really in position to go out and contest. So it's like, all right, well, might as well do what I can. Plus, meet our first inspiring kid of the year. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's get the answer to our pop quiz. True or false? Identical twins have the same fingerprints. The answer is... False! 
Identical twins do not have matching fingerprints. Like physical appearance and personality, fingerprints are largely shaped by a person's DNA and by a variety of other environmental forces. Well, let's take a wild turn. They're some of the most majestic animals on the planet, not to mention the tallest. Here to answer a few questions on giraffes is Tracy Fenn with the Jacksonville Zoo. Tracy, thank you so much for being with us. We see one of your, uh, your uh, giraffes right behind you right now. My first question, I think, is on the minds of most people. Let's talk about that long neck. What's the purpose of it? Well, giraffes are special uh, based on their height. They are able to eat foods that no other terrestrial animal Animals can reach, so they uh, have a special role in the ecosystem for eating uh, twigs and leaves that are uh, high up in the trees. I bet they can also see um, other animals that might be a danger to them. It's kind of like an early warning control tower. Yeah, actually, the the long neck also serves predator protection, so they can see far uh, from where they are and have an early heads up when predators are are coming. So, how big do they grow? So f at birth, giraffes are about six foot tall. Uh, females can grow to be about 14 foot tall, sometimes taller, and weigh about 1,500 pounds. Uh, males can grow to 18 feet or taller and weigh about 3,000 pounds. The tallest giraffe on record was 20 feet tall. Uh, you know, I've had the chance a few times to actually see giraffes in the wild, and they're majestic, and they're amazing to watch, and they appear to be gentle. I, I see over your shoulder someone that appears to be hand-feeding uh, a giraffe right now. Are they gentle and, and safe to be around? Yeah, for the most part, uh, in safe, protected contact, they are um, pretty docile animals. Of course, their their size alone is uh, makes them capable of hurting uh, you if they uh, if given the opportunity. So we uh, work them in careful conditions, but uh, we have the opportunity for our zoo guests to feed the giraffes here, and it's a great way for guests to connect with the animals and. We hope by giving them the opportunity to have this experience, we can inspire guests to take action to help protect wild giraffe populations. Yeah, I know that's something something unique you're doing there, allowing you know, some of the people to come by and actually feed them. Uh, how, do the, how do the giraffes react to strangers? Our giraffes are pretty acclimated to this program. They've been doing it for quite a few years. And of course, their favorite food item, one of their favorite food items is browse or tree, uh, tree leaves and twigs. Uh, and that's what the guests feed them. So they're motivated to come and get those treats from the guests and uh, don't have too many qualms about doing that. All right, maybe you can clear this question up. I have heard the giraffes sleep standing up. Is that true? That is true. Actually, adult giraffes rarely lay down. Uh, giraffes need the least amount of sleep out of the entire animal kingdom, and they only need about 30 minutes of a night of sleep. And um, they get that by going into very short bouts of sleep, and even sometimes in this sort of half sleep resting period. Uh, but yes, they very rarely lay down. That's correct. Fascinating. Any additional fun facts about giraffes you want to share before we say goodbye? I would like to touch on the conservation of giraffes. Giraffes are in a uh, what's called a silent extinction uh, in the wild. Uh, their population is dwindling quickly without a lot of public awareness about that. And that's one reason we do the feedings here to inspire people to care about giraffes and take action. Uh, we support in situ giraffe conservation through the zoo. Um, there are 100 AZA accredited zoos in the U.S. that house giraffes and collect Effectively, those institutions contribute uh, a lot of money to giraffe conservation in 17 different African countries uh, in the amount of 4.3 million by 2020 uh, is what the uh, AZA zoos have raised for giraffe conservation. Well, that's terrific and I really appreciate you letting us know about that. I, I didn't know some of those facts about giraffes. So uh, thank you so much for coming on. It was really good to talk to you, Tracy. Thank you. Well, switching gears now, the Boston Celtics recently held a kids' day at their arena, so we sent our kid correspondent Isaac to check out the action on and off the court. It's kids' day with the Celtics, a fun day for kids to get involved at TD Garden in Boston. Can you teach me a move? From a dance performance to the national anthem, 
to Lucky the Leprechaun. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Giving me a behind the scenes pass to the Celtics on game day. We are heading to the media section and I'll take you to your media seat. Taylor handles press for the Celtics and showed me around. So your seat is right here. Great view of the game. Absolutely. <laughs> the Celtics are my favorite NBA team. And with a little experience under my belt covering the Pats, I couldn't pass it up. Right now we're walking onto the court and we're gonna see the players up close. We are at TD Garden on the court, watching the Celtics warm up to play the Orlando Magic. Can't wait. Now we're going to the presser. Hey coach, I'm Isaac Leibowitz from Nightly News Kids Edition. How you doing buddy? I read that you have a prayer board with hopes and dreams. Now that you're an NBA head coach, what's your next dream? Um, it's a good question continue to try to be great at the job that I have, you know, and then also not to let it define me. So focus on the other areas of my life that are really important. So uh, my marriage, uh, being a parent, knowing that I have an opportunity to have a positive effect on other people. Absolutely. It's a great question. Thank you. That was awesome. I just spoke to Joe Mazzula and I, I asked him a question and he said it was a good question. Great feeling. Thanks, Coach. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Great question. Thank you. We just passed the workout room where the players train and get stretched out before the game, and we saw Al Horford and some other players working out. Where are we going now? We are going back to the court and rebound for some of the team members. Hey, there we go. They don't miss. And we see Jalen Brown warming up, and it's really cool. I'm in the locker room right now. Everyone's really just getting in the zone to play the Orlando Magic. I'm Isaac Leibowitz from Nightly News Kids Edition. Awesome. Yeah. I know you're known for jumping with your hands up to contest opponent's shot from far away. Yeah. Right there. He's just going to jump in the air and block the rim. How are you going to make a shot with him doing that, the cornet contest? Uh, what was the idea behind this? Yeah, so the idea behind it, um, I mean, I started doing it maybe like a year or two ago. A lot of times I'm by the rim and helping, uh, trying to cover up and like prevent layups and stuff. And then it gets kicked out to your guy and you're like not really in position to go out and contest. So it's like, all right, well, might as well do what I can. Uh, yeah, it's kind of how it started. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, smart idea. It works. All you can see is Luke's hands when you shoot. Yeah, it's not the most conventional. Yeah. And I like to think of myself as a real uh, Van Gogh type of guy. It's awesome. Yeah, appreciate it's it. Thank cool you. Cool to watch on TV. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey, Grant, what's up? Grant. I'm with the Nightly News NBC Kids Edition. Okay. Just wanted to ask you some rapid fire questions. Favorite player when you were growing up? Charles Barkley. Who's your favorite artist? Uh, J. Cole. Toughest player you had to guard? Mm, yeah, I'll say Darius Garland. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you eat for breakfast game day? Mm, granola and berries and uh, yogurt. Yo. What are you streaming on Netflix right now? <sighs> Netflix? Don't got time for Netflix. You got to work on the game. Summer. All right, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Appreciate meeting you. Good video as well. Have a good game. Thank you, brother. All right. Appreciate it. Jalen Brown just hit a three to make it a two-point game, and the crowd is going crazy. Wasn't enough to get the W, but the kids definitely won today. It's been such a great day at the Celtics behind the scenes. Thanks for coming. You're welcome back anytime. You did a great job. All right, thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. You too. Tough loss for the Celtics today. They lost by three in a back and forth battle. Still a great day here. Lots of smiling faces celebrating Kids Day. I'm Isaac Leibowitz, Nightly News Kids Edition at TD Garden in Boston. Lester, back to you. That was really cool, Isaac. Thanks very much. Well, now to our inspiring kids series. I want to introduce you to a young man who wanted to make a difference in his community and help others all through his love of cooking. So I'm Michael Platt. Um, I am 17 years old. I'm a food justice advocate. Michael Platt wants to make sure no one is hungry. He calls himself a food justice advocate and social entrepreneur. Social entrepreneur is a person who establishes an enterprise with an aim of solving a social problem or affecting social change. 
The Maryland teen created a recipe for change when he started Michael's Desserts in 2017. He followed a one-for-one -one model used by other social enterprises. One good baked, one good donated to people in need. I feel like it's really simple. I just like cooking, I like baking, um, and like feeding people, even if they can't afford it. So for every dessert someone buys, Michael donates another one to someone in need, whether it's at a local shelter or food pantry. Just dropped off some snack packs at the food pantry and all the people there seem to be going strong. We first met Michael two years ago when he was making and donating snack packs to families who were struggling during the pandemic. Yeah, it's really cool just to like know that what I'm doing and I'm doing, I'm doing something that I love to do, but it's still helping other people and it's still making different people's lives. Now, the 17 year old is raising a different kind of awareness. The cupcakes I'm making today are, um, it's a, it's a type of cupcake that I make called Freedom Fighter Cupcakes. His new cookbook features recipes inspired by freedom fighters, famous civil rights activists like Booker T. Washington, Harriet Tubman, Maya Angelou, and his biggest inspiration, Martin Luther King Jr. He's probably the first person that I heard about um, when I was learning about like inequality and all of that. Um, so he's definitely the biggest person who inspired me in his cupcake, his Super Potato Pie Cupcake. Um, so it's, it's basically based off of him, as well as just kind of like the impact that Super Potato Pie has on like the African-American community. I think it's a really important dessert. Michael says the freedom fighters he included in his book have inspired and motivated him to give back to his community. Part of the book's profits will be donated to help with food insecurity, including the No Kid Hungry initiative. Using your time, your resources, or advocating or educating, so there are many different ways to give. Michael has been visiting schools across the country like this middle school in Queens, New York recently to speak with kids about sweets for a cause and feed some young minds both literally and figuratively. So basically, the cupcake we're making today is um, Maya Angelou cupcakes, which are base, which are um, banana pudding cupcakes because Maya Angelou's favorite dessert was banana pudding. He was so young when he started like his social enterprise. And I took away from that saying like, if he could do it, I can too. And that I'll be able to like, maybe like one day, like start my own and help other people out. And showing you only need a few ingredients to make a big difference. I can make an impact on a lot of other people in that um, even things that might not seem as important like baking sometimes is taken seriously. Um, it can still be important. It can still uh, help people need. I bake cupcakes and like I just give cupcakes away to people who are in homeless shelters, people who are in domestic violence shelters, um, so just people like on the streets just for fun, but also just to give them like a sweet treat, something that I know I can do, something that I enjoy doing, um, a resource of mine and giving that to someone in need. Wow, what an inspiration. Great story. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, I want to remind you, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. You can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition every Thursday on nbcnews.com and YouTube and streaming on the weekends on NBC News Now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.